this can't be a, oh, I've got to throw out that old legacy stuff and start over. But if you're really going to get the, the efficiencies that Tom talked about and, and making it so you don't need 70% of your resources focused just to keep the lights on, you've got to take the existing investments and figure out how to make things simpler. So one of the things I find when I talk to, uh, to folks is they ask, okay, I, I, I like the vision, I understand where this next era of computing is going. What do I do first? How, how do I get started? And we did a, a, a large amount of research last year on what does the journey look like? And one of the things I wanted to find out is why do people virtualize? When, what's the experience? What, what motivates it? And what we found is there's three different phases to this transformation or to this journey. The first phase is typically driven by some particular business event, be it a data center refresh, um, where you need getting new hardware, or you're moving the data center, or an acquisition, or a budget cost, or something happens. And so what happens in this case is someone in IT says, hey, I've heard about this virtualization thing. Let's give it a shot. Let's just see if this thing works. And so in phase one of the journey, the first thing that people virtualize is everything that IT owns file servers, web servers, print servers, and dev and test servers. And what happens in phase one is the value proposition or the primary motivation is the cost savings. You could buy 10 servers or you could buy one. And the quickly understanding the value of pooling and improving utilization and automation. And so we work great with folks like HP to go in and help, help people realize those benefits. In fact, it's not uncommon for customers in phase one to see an ROI in nine weeks time. And so what happens as they go through phase one is more and more confidence gets built up in the champion of the uh, virtualization. And they're going through and excited about what happens. And they, they basically uh, virtualize all of the IT-owned servers. And then it gets to the cusp of phase two. And in phase two, a lot of interesting things happen. One, I wanted to find out what's the first line of business application that a customer virtualizes. Because if we understood what that was, we could do some targeted services or some additional things to help customers along the journey. Well, it turns out we got all the data back, and the first application that is virtualized in uh, the phase two of the cycle is different at every single company. Now, it didn't make sense to me when I first saw the data. I was like, there's got to be a rhyme or reason to this. What's the story? So we double-clicked on the data, did some additional interviews. And what we discovered was the first application that people virtualize in the uh, phase two is whoever the champion is in phase one on the IT team goes to his or her buddy in the application or the line of business and says, hey, let me virtualize your servers. I'll buy you a beer, I'll take you to dinner, I'll do whatever it takes. And essentially based on that relationship or the path of least resistance, the line of business person will agree with the IT person to virtualize and that then starts them on phase two of the journey. Now the interesting thing about phase two of the journey is the cube sort of turns a little bit and the value proposition is no longer about um, consolidation ratios or costs uh, with, as far as CapEx costs but it's more around the operational efficiency, uh, better agility, uh, better responsiveness, um, fault tolerance, high availability, those kinds of values become really important. And so as people then start moving through, the person who sponsored the virtualization journey in phase two becomes sort of a champion and they work through the, the organization and they go from 20% virtualized to 65% virtualized. Now two interesting things happen. One, at about 30% virtualized, there's a light that goes off. And what happens at that point is people realize, wait a second, I'm not just using a cute little piece of software. I'm actually transforming the way I do my business. I was talking to a, a joint customer of HP and VMware uh, last year who um, was telling me, he was a CIO, and he was telling me, you know, Todd, I love the technology, I love what you guys have done for, for me, but I hate what you've done to my life. And I was like, I hate what we've done to your life, how, how could that be? And he said, well, here you don't understand. IT's been run in a very consistent way over, you know, the last 20 some years. It's a very hub and spoke model. The data space administrators, they don't talk to the network administrators. 
And the system the network administrators don't talk to the system administrators. They all talk to me, and I'm sort of the, the traffic cop. And they don't like each other, and they don't talk, and so that's fine. That's just the way the world is. But this virtualization thing has forced people to actually have to interact and talk to each other. And so as CIO, I have more HR issues to deal with now than I've ever had before because Bob doesn't like Sue and back and back. And so what we're finding is that about 30% virtualized, many of our customers need help not with the technology, but more in the people and process. What do they need to do as far as organizational structures? What kind of processes do they need? How, you know, the physical processes don't necessarily apply in this new world, and how is all that going to play together? And so we find a lot of folks need some uh, reference guides, best practices, and we're doing a lot of things to share um, that with our uh, those customers. In fact, we're working with our uh, friends at HP to really share some of that, that vision and thought leadership and how to organize a structure for this next era of computing. Another point in phase two of the journey is a lot of folks in the line of business don't even necessarily understand what these, if you will, soft cost savings are. It's interesting, you know, everybody wants to see the tangible capex savings so they can measure the dollar savings. I could buy 10 servers or I could buy one. But the soft savings are a little bit harder to quantify. So we were meeting with the uh, folks at Disney and they were telling us that um, they virtualized the infrastructure and they were really happy with what they've done um, because what they've been able to achieve is with the TV show Dancing with the Stars, it used to take them 30 days to pull together the infrastructure and provision everything to support a new season of the show. Since they virtualize, they can now do it overnight. And as they were telling us about this, it was great, and they were saying, but you know, we don't really see any kind of business benefits to what we've got, but we really think this is cool. And, and so then we asked the question, but gosh, 30 days versus one day, isn't there some business benefit there? And the response was, oh yeah, you're right. I guess, I guess you're right. So a lot of these soft costs, we're really trying to work with our customers to help understand and measure the results and the benefits of this transformation. Okay, on to phase three. So in phase three of the journey, this is, um, uh, I'll tell a quick story on how folks get there. So they get to about 65% virtualized. They virtualize all their tier two and tier three applications. And phase three is where they hit the tier one applications. And one of our large customers on the West Coast um, uh, does a really good job of monitoring and tracking the uptime and availability of all their applications. And so the CIO called the staff in and said, uh, you guys have screwed the dashboard up. You've got to go fix this. And, and the virtualization guys came in and said, what do you mean? And he said, you know, we pay tens of millions of dollars for our tier one applications to be up and high availability and, and all that kind of stuff. And this dashboard report shows that tier two and tier three apps have better uptime and availability than tier one. So clearly you've broken the report and go fix it. And so they told him, well, really nothing broken the report. What happened is we virtualized tier two and tier three and we haven't gotten to tier one yet. So at that point, the customer entered tier one, uh, uh, phase three of the journey, um, which is uh, virtualization first policy. And at that point is when the customers say, every new server will be virtualized and make things happen. And so when we look at this transformation journey and what happened, uh, the different phases, the different value propositions, the different benefits that come through there, as folks get into phase three, that's when they can really start to experience the benefits of IT as a service and some of the cloud computing benefits and forgetting the name cloud, just some of the tangible, measurable user experience and business benefits that are being uh, prescribed around this next era of computing, that can happen. So as you look at your business and what you need to do to, to drive things forward, um, we're excited to be partners with HP and be able to work to help you on this virtualization journey to take advantage and be leaders in this next era. So in summary, um, when you look at, you know, in any industry, um, we always try to find partnerships where one plus one equals three. And uh, on behalf of all the VMware employees, um, we'd like to thank HP for being an incredible partner of ours and working with us so that we can actually benefit and drive together the change and, and be a leader in this transformation. But I think most importantly, the, the HP VMware uh, relationship benefits you. 
and our focus at VMware and at HP is really to empower and enable you to take advantage, to drive the agility and responsiveness that business needs so you can deliver IT as a service.